from Chicago at Historic Navy Pier, it's the 11th Annual Oriti Awards for Courage in Sports. Cliff Meidel is an American hero whose story of determination inspired the world at the Olympic Games in Sydney. I was always a determined individual. I always really liked to uh, try my hardest. I think it's the challenge. Competition's been in my blood my whole life. I think that it's, it's that, that feeling of accomplishment that I get. I think it all comes from your heart. You gotta really want it yourself, and if you really want it, you can do it. As a 20-year-old college student, Cliff was working a summer job as a plumber's apprentice. One day, Cliff volunteered to help with the jackhammer. Moments later, his jackhammer cut into three buried hypertension wires. The consequences were horrific. I was blown off the jackhammer, and then I had slid back down into the hole, and that's where I came in contact with the jackhammer for the second time. I was electrocuted by about 30,000 volts of electricity. That's what went through my body until it hit the circuit breaker. That, that's about five times the amount that they give to people in the electric chairs. I had a couple of toes that were blown off and some exit wounds on my back and the back of my head. Cliff was pronounced dead three times. It took two weeks for the burning inside Cliff's body to run its course. The damage to his knees was alarming. As they took the bandages off my legs, I could actually see the knee bone in both of my legs. The electricity had burned away the internal structure of Cliff's knees. Amputation was recommended, but Cliff and his family would not give up. Cliff's mother called me. I came down and met her and then saw Cliff and saw what the problems were and thought that, that it was uh, possible that we could uh, do some good and save his legs. Dr. Les Savoy was able to save his legs, but it would be up to Cliff to get his life back. After my accident, I had to grow up really fast. Uh, that was pretty traumatic experience for a 20 year old to go through at that time. At times I would get angry and, and you, you always try to find blame because that's the easiest thing to do. He was getting a little bit down and he was getting his therapy and I just said look now your wounds are healed, I've done my job, it's time now for you to do yours. He told me Cliff you know I've done my 50 percent or I've done the surgery it's up to you to come up with the other 50 percent and drive up some will and determination and, and get motivated and you're going to have to do a lot of hard work in order to rehabilitate and get yourself back to where you were. It's the patient that really makes the doctor look great, you know, uh, in any type of rehabilitation type of situation. But he really had that inner fortitude and I could see in his eyes and in his expressions that he had the, the forthrightness to really uh, propel himself and be a tremendous success. What I tried to do is uh, take a negative situation and make it positive. I told myself, well, here is who I am today. I can no longer change the situation that I'm in, so make the best of it. None of us knows how we will ever react to severe adversity. If we're going to take it easily, just lying down and kind of wilt away, uh, or if we're going to fight it. After 15 surgeries and 15 months, Cliff won the battle to save his life and his legs. But Cliff had much more fight in him. He took on the sport of kayaking. I loved the concept of kayaking. I thought that would be a great sport for me. I can't use my legs or anything, so it's all upper body, so maybe I could try that. And that was a really good avenue for me in terms of rehabilitation. I got a lot of support. I took a liking to it, and I just got more and more competitive. Kayaking allowed Cliff to demonstrate the strength of his will. And in 1996, amazingly, he made the United States Olympic team. The story of Cliff Meidel was starting to spread. I don't think I consider myself a hero. Um, I don't know how people view me, but if, if I can go out there and help kids or help any adult or anybody that's gone through a traumatic experience, that's what I like to look at. That's my goal. That's what I'd like to accomplish.
in an awesome show of perseverance, Cliff made the United States Olympic team again this year. The power of this comeback was felt by the American team, who elected him to carry the flag in the opening ceremonies in Sydney. It is the highest honor. As I say, you gotta be kidding me. I couldn't believe it out of all these athletes. How was I elected for that? So I was, so at that time I remember just chills going through my body. And then I remember walking into the stadium and then every time I saw an American section with American flags, I would wave the flag towards that area and trying to get the crowd all riled up. You know, you train so hard and you're so dedicated to achieve a goal. But when I was carrying the flag, that's just pure honor and pride. It was the happiest moment of my life. I got the goosebumps. It doesn't matter whether he, you know, wins or loses in his particular sport. He has won, period. End of story. Cliff Midal, flag bearer for a nation, standard bearer for the power of the human spirit.